So good afternoon, students. So today we will be do, conducting an experiment on discharge over a notch. So basically, there are two types of notches. One is a triangular, and another is a rectangular notch. So first, we will understand what is the basic need for this experiment. So if the flow is going through a closed pipe, then then if you want to measure the discharge, whether it is an open canal or closed pipe, the conventional way is this method. That is note down the time taken for known volume water collection or take a measuring tank, note down the time taken for completely filling of that tank. So already you know the volume and you also know the time taken to fill that. So this volume divided by time gives you the discharge. Right? Now this discharge is always called as an actual discharge and is the most accurate and correct measuring of discharge. So if the flow is taking place in a pipe, that discharge divided by cross section area of pipe also gives you the velocity. But here our objective is to measure the discharge. Right? Now for this method, that is conventional way of measuring the discharge, where you will collect water in a container and measure time, this is practically possible maybe in a lab. Suppose water is flowing in a large canal or a pipe, then this method may not be practically possible. So this necessitates to go for some equipments. So for measurement of discharge through a closed pipes, like we have equipments like orifice meter, venture meter, which we will discuss later. But if the flow is taking place in an open canal where flow is atmospheric, we have devices called as a notches. Right? Now these notches give us the theoretical discharge through a canal, canal or channel, whatever you call it. Right? So right now what is there in the setup is a triangular notch. Right? So using this triangular notch, I am going to get a discharge value. And since it is theoretical, we call it as Q theoretical. But if you find or if you later measure the discharge through this actual method, then you will observe that the discharge measured through an actual conventional way and that using a notch will have a slight difference. Right? So this ratio of theoretical discharge to actual discharge we call it as coefficient of discharge. So in our today's experiment, our objective is to measure the coefficient of discharge for a given notch setup. Right? Now you have to understand here, what is being done in the lab is slightly different from what is used in the reality. So in the lab, we have a setup here to calculate the actual discharge. Then using the setup and a predefined or a derived equation, we can get the theoretical discharge. Now as theoretical discharge is always greater than the actual discharge, right? So here we find the value of CD. Right? In lab we have all the setup, we find a value of CD. Now that value of CD, suppose it comes to be 0.65, we call it as coefficient of discharge for this triangular notch. Now you can even see a rectangular notch here. Suppose the value of CD for this rectangular notch comes to be 0.65. Now what is the practical use in reality? Suppose tomorrow you, are, you want to measure the actual discharge through an open canal, a big open canal. There you don't have this setup. There you cannot take a tank and note down the time taken for that much volume of water collection. What you can do is just fix up a notch, get the value of theoretical discharge, multiply this Q theoretical by the value of CD which you have already done. Right? So suppose this, this discharge comes to be 100 liters per second, CD is 0.65. So 100 into 0.65 is 65 liters per second. What is that 65 liters per second? It is the actual discharge. So this is how the value of CD is used in reality. But in the laboratory, today we don't have the CD value for this notch, but we have the setup to calculate the theoretical discharge as well as actual discharge. So we'll take the ratio of Q actual by Q theoretical, which by definition is known as coefficient of discharge. Now we will directly use these equations which you are going to derive in detail in your theoretical class. Right? So first you observe the experimental setup. Actually it is a closed circuit. So we have a pump here and we have a sump. So water is pumped through this centrifugal pump into this canal and here we have a notch. So after flowing over the notch the water is again put back into the same sump. But in reality there is no closed circuit. Water may be flowing from a canal from one end to the other end. Right? So here we have inlet for water. Then water flows through here in a manner. Now you can just observe here. Water is not directly flowing into the canal. Here we have two baffle plates. So one baffle plate diverts the water in this direction. Then water comes in this direction and finally it moves in a zigzag manner. And then it comes here. The reason is here to, we want to avoid uh, 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 remove the vibrations or turbulence in the water. So when water is flowing here, we want to measure some readings. So reading has to be correct. If there is a turbulence in water, then the readings may not be accurate. Next important part here is we have something called as a hook gauge here. Right? 
So this hook cage can be operated and we can remove, bring this turn or this hook cage down or up so that the tip just touches the water. Now when water is flowing over this level, we call it as a crest, crest or sill, S-I-L-L. So this is the first reading of this notch. So when water is up to the sill or crest level, we call it as H1 reading. Now suppose if we start the flow later which we will show, then water will be flowing at some level. Again you adjust the hook gauge and note down the value of H2. So this second reading minus the reading of the notch when it is at sill level gives you the height of water flowing over the notch. Now this is the only measurement here, right? So we have a formula for calculation of theoretical discharge for this notch as Q theoretical is equal to 8 by 15 root of 2G into tan theta by 2 into capital H raised to 5 by 2. That capital H is nothing but the height of water flowing over this notch. Okay, one part we have done, that is Q theoretical. Now how to get Q actually? For that you have a setup here. You can see that this is a measuring tank. Suppose water is at 10 cm here. Now you have to note down the time taken till water comes from 10 to 20 cm. That means, now if I know the area of tank into height, suppose area is 100 mm by 200 mm or 0.2 meter by 0.1 meter, it is 0 0.02 meter square. Now this area of tank into this height gives you the volume. Now that volume divided by time taken for this size gives you the discharge. So you have Q actual measured, Q theoretical measured, take a ratio of Q actual by Q theoretical, that is known as coefficient of discharge for the notch. So I just make this point once again. In the lab, you have the setup for Q actual, you have the setup for Q theoretical, the ratio gives you CD. You are actually doing the calibration of this notch. Now once, suppose you do this experiment 100 times, every time you get the CD value in the range of 0.6 to 0.62. So you take an average and you fix it as 0.61. What is the practical use? So in reality, you can use this notch, directly measure theoretical value, multiply it by 0.6 to get the Q actual value. Right? This is the concept behind this notch. So in the next setup, we will show you how to take the reading and conclude this experiment. So what we will do is, today we will do the experiment for this uh, uh, triangular notch. So on, during the lab session, we will explain how to solve and how to take one reading and do the simple calculation. But in the next week's lab, the same video can be replayed and we will just replace this triangular notch by the rectangular notch. So directly we will view the readings for rectangular notch and we can conduct that experiment also. So the setup for both these notches is the same. As now you can see here, we have drawn a symbolic sketch to represent a triangular notch. The derivation will be done in the theory class. So you have the formula 8 by 15 root 2 g tan theta by 2 into h raised to 5 by 2 where theta is the total angle of the notch. But in formula it comes as theta by 2. Now the only reading that you are going to do in this experiment is the hook cage reading. So initial hook cage reading is the reading when water is at the sill level. Final hook cage reading is the reading when the water is at certain height. So this H2 minus H1 or H1 difference H2 gives you the H. Like this, we will take 4 or 5 sets of reading. Every time you have to note down the hook cage reading. Plus, the second reading that you are going to calculate is time taken for 10 cm rise of water. Now this is for Q actual, this is for Q theoretical, the ratio gives you the value of CD. So that is the objective of your experiment, that is to calculate the coefficient of discharge of this. And there are certain observations, angle of the notch normally it will be given, right now this is 60 degree notch, least count of hook cage that is available from the equipment, breadth of the measuring tank and length of the measuring tank. Here if you measure the length and breadth, then you will calculate the area, this into height gives you volume, volume by time gives you the discharge. Otherwise, if you directly have a measuring jar, suppose you have a 2 litre jar, note down the time taken for 2 litres, 2 litre by time directly gives you Q action, right? Now here, breadth and measuring, breadth of measuring tank, length of measuring tank, all that will give you during the lab session. And even, there is one more arrangement here, you can see, right now, water is not flowing in the channel, we have diverted it back to the sump. Now, here we have a wall where by making certain adjustment you can divert the water to the notch so that here you can take four or five sets of reading right so let's note down the first reading now you can see water is at the crest level right now here we have a hookage reading where there is a formula i think all of you are already aware of it total reading is equal to main scale reading plus coinciding division into the least count right tsr that is total scale reading is equal to main scale reading 
plus coinciding division into the least count, right? You can see that zero is at certain point here. Anyhow, we will give you a reading and show you the sample calculation. But the formula method to calculate reading is this zero is coinciding with certain reading. You have to note down that. Suppose it is 4.6 or whatever. Then here you have 10 divisions on this side. You can see. So whichever division coincides that into the least count of this gives you the total scale reading, right? So later when you come back to the college, you can have a look at all the equipments and also see this case readings, right? So right now we have the first reading that is for H1 when the water is at the sea level. Now we'll start the flow rate. We'll divert the water from sump back to the channel. Okay. Now you can see here. Uh, water is flowing here now, so water goes through the baffle plate and finally it comes here and you can see here, so now you can see the level of water is rising on the map. Now we will fix up certain discharge, okay, now you can see water is flowing at certain height over the crest of the notch. Now you have to adjust the hook cage after some time. So wait for maybe 10 or 15 seconds so that there is a steady flow. Steady flow means property should not change with respect to time. Now at this stage, suppose you want to take a reading, do not operate the wall. Now you have to adjust the hook cage. Then by adjusting the hook cage, make sure the tip just touches the water level. Okay. At this stage, now you have to note down the second reading. Again, second reading is total scale reading is equal to main scale reading that is MSR plus coincident division among this 10 into the least count of the hook cage. This hook cage has 1 centimeter divided into 10 millimeters. Again, 10 divisions are there. So least count is 0 0.01. So you can go up to 100th of the reading of this hook cage. Like this, you will take 4 or 5 sets of reading, right? For every reading, Note down the hookage reading or whenever you change the flow rate, note down the hookage reading and time taken for the 10 cm of water collection. And to empty this collecting tank, again we have a wall here. So make sure when you are taking the reading, this wall has to be closed. For example, now water will rise into this tank. Just observe here. So now at point number 4, I will start the reading. This is for Q actually. So at point 4, we will start the stopwatch now. So now the water is rising here. I will wait till it comes to 14. I am sure all of you can clearly see that. Now water is rising in the collecting tank. That means I am collecting known volume of water. And also I am noting down the time. Okay. Now by the time it comes to 14, we will stop. Yes, you can see that now once it comes to 14, yes, we will exactly stop. That means now you know the area of time. So it took almost 38 seconds to collect 10 cm of water rise. That means so 38 seconds are required to collect what volume of water? You know the area of tank, you know the length and width, all dimensions are given here. The sump tank has 900 mm by 400 mm by 400 mm, it's a mile tank. That means 900 mm is the width, 400 is the height, and 400 is the width. So 900 into 400 gives you area. Uh, this is for this is for a measuring tank. We have 400 by 300 by 300. That is 400 is the width, 300 is the height, and 300 is the length. So by knowing the area and the height, by multiplying area into height, you will give volume. Volume by this time gives the direct discharge. So the concept here is. We are going to measure the actual discharge by conventional method, theoretical discharge by the notch, the ratio of Q actual by Q theoretical due to the coefficient of discharge. Once CD is done, once CD is calculated, that means this notch is calibrated. So later for actual measurement, measure only the theoretical discharge multiplied by CD to get the actual discharge. So this is the concept behind this notch actual. Right? So this video will cater for triangular notch as well as for rectangular notch, the same for series there. So this Friday, we will do an experiment or we will show the calculation for triangular notch and next week's rectangular notch, we will show the calculation for rectangular notch in the subsequent week. But the same procedure will be there for both triangular and rectangular notch. So with this, 
will conclude the experiment on the notches. So bottom line is, notches are the devices used to measure the discharge or open canal. Whereas for closed pipes, which we call it as closed conduits, we have other equipments like venturimeter and orifice, which we'll discuss in the second cycle of this equipment. And one more thing here, so already we have done two experiments, one is Reynolds apparatus and another is metacentric height. So here we have two equipments, one is triangular notch and rectangular notch. So this together completes first cycle. So as far as journal writing is concerned, all of you upload the journals of all four experiments together, maybe after another week, directly. That means on this Friday we'll conduct experiment on triangular notch, next Friday we'll conduct experiment on rectangular notch. So all these four experiments together make one PDF file and upload it by October 10th. So you have another 15 or 17 days time. So by that time, upload the first cycle journal together. So that we'll have only two files from one student. One file for cycle one experiments, one file for cycle two experiments. This will reduce our confusion with respect to too many number of files. I hope this point is clear. Once again, we'll discuss this in detail with respect to calculations in the regular lab. Thank you.